Hello everyone and welcome to the 2021 Love at First Sting taking place on Sunday, February 7th, aka Super Bowl Sunday. We have the back half of round one at the Angry Beaver Disc Golf Course and just me, myself, and I, Terry Miller, the Disc Golf Guy, bringing in the coverage and the commentary. We've got Paul Ulibarri, who claimed this is the toughest course in all of Charlotte. And he's, <laughs> he's trying to prove that wrong on hole 10, but Thanks. to see Yuli sitting at even par through nine holes should tell you just how difficult this course really is. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle Ducks, Thummer, uh, squares up on that left side tree. Co-tournament director Devin Grady of Scorpion Disc Golf. Kyle, of course, representing another round disc golf. We also have David Weaver on the card. I'll see you later. <laughs> Hitting a late tree on that left side. This is a rock by David Weaver. Okay, okay, late tree. I mean, it didn't kick left in this case. Devin's over there giggling. <laughs> and the one time you wanted to hit a tree, it can't find one. David, at least 70 feet. Okay. Yep. Yep. Little stone, baby! <laughs> yeah. There he is. Way downtown. That's like... I don't know, downtown Charlotte. Huge pot. Devin would love to have an answer to that, but a little more obstruction in his way. This is Kyle trying to save his par. Not so much on saving the trees. And Yuli's forehand will net him the birdie. And he's going to get back to under par. This hole played at a dead even three. Averaged exactly that. Turns out to be one of the easier holes on the course. In fact, the third easiest hole that we find on the course for round number one. Big shout out to my Patreon supporters and subscribers as we're here on 11. Oh boy, he says. Uh, I, I know they I have been uh, developing and working on some new tees out there. Of course, we had rain the entire night before. So footing a little bit more challenging on this tea, this particular tee. And then on top of it, it's a par four, 621 feet. And a full, full flex shot. Get my F words mixed up there. Full flex shot by Weaver. So you saw the two arrows on the trees. That's just pointing us to where this really dog leg is up and to the right. So getting up to the landing zone. Getting up toward those trees is paramount. <laughs> They're giving Devin a hard time about not using the shorter T on this one. Again, all the T's and assignments were set up prior. I don't think he, they were planning necessarily on a whole night of rain the I night before. Believe. That seems unfair. <laughs> Sometimes, Kyle, disc golf seems unfair. I agree with you there. Dude, so really, so Devin, great. he's still trying to play the fairway where Yuli contemplated quite a bit here. And, folks, this is what you call a poke and hope. 
He's going for the hero shot. Because he doesn't want to pitch out to the fairway. Almost behind him. <laughs> I'm a genius. <laughs> yeah, B plus, Simon. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if genius is the term I'd use there. Maybe lucky and definitely skilled, but I don't know if genius is where I'd roll with that one. Uh, they were having a conversation in the group as to how Simon Lazat had previously rated Paul Ulibarri's sidearm capabilities. No, you were, you were, I saw you. You And Devin... Not quite as uh, genius. I say use air quotes on that. Is Paul and the big sigh says it all. I mentioned it in the previous nine holes. I love the the markers there, telling him he's three hundred. You see the two hundred foot white marker and then the one hundred foot red marker. Super uh, helpful. I was going to say assisting. Stable. Don't oh, cut roll. Well, That's okay. Not too bad. Not too bad for Kyle. And Yuli's going to manufacture a par after uh, finding himself way off the fairway on that tee shot. That is an incredible scramble. Good looking shot by Devin. Nope. You little girl. You think most girls are better than me? <laughs> <laughs> I love the uh, <laughs> the uh, probably appropriate and PC assessment there. Uh, <laughs> Oh, great putt. And just like that, David, who was uh, sarcastically <laughs> enthusiastic about his nine over after nine, has now said uh, he wants to turn around on the back. He's two down in the first two holes on the back. And he said it would be a real bonus if he gets the next one. But very impressive here. Starts the back nine. Back-to-back -back birdies. Look at Yuli. He's in a hurry or something. Where do you gotta be? Oh, I gotta go film something. I don't know. It's a lot of fun out here, but some guy out decides to step in and interrupt everything that's going on. What's up with this? Okay, so we're about 11 holes in and clearly a very challenging course. So what I want to do is give away a three disc mystery pack. Okay, well, I'm not really doing it. I'm just helping facilitate it along with my friends over at SixSidedDisc.com. They have four different mystery packs that you can choose from tailored to your likings. They have the Crusher, the Technician, the Luminescent, and the Creative. What I'm going to do is pull from the comments below after you've liked and shared and subscribed and all that other stuff. But I'm going to pull from the comments below of you telling me what is your most challenging course. And whether that's one you've seen or played, I want to know what is the most challenging course that you uh, feel is out there. Again, it can be one you've seen or played. And once I've done that, seven days after this event has posted this round, I will then pull from someone and hook you up with our friends over at Six Sided Disc for a three disc mystery pack. All you gotta do is play along guys, comment below, and make sure you like and subscribe. Let's get back to the action and close out at the Angry Beaver. That's what we're all trying to do, just close things out here at the Angry Beaver. <laughs> he says it's clean. We've got seven holes left to play. Hole 12, 333 feet. Hole 12 uh, on the slightly easier side, about the seventh easiest hole on the course. 
yet it still averages 3.32. So it averages over par. Yuli not getting the three-point field goal there. Sneaking up that left side, hitting a late tree. Devin double-checking his footing here. Hole 12. Definitely stingy with the birdies. Yeah. Looking for a kick. Okay. No, no kick. Maybe just a long putt required. Yuli's got plenty of work to do here. It's another tree. And after Yuli was short, uh, which was really deceptive, I had thought he was going to be up there right inside the circle. He's at best looking at a bogey. Oh. David. Might have had a chance. Thinking he had a chance. And this is Devin for his birdie look. And uh, stress-free. Stress-free three. Take your par. Move on. Clearly you're seeing that par. Not so bad. I think these guys are talking about double G beef jerky. Which, by the way, double G I haven't had yet, but uh, my order's coming in soon. My dad makes amazing ground venison beef jerky. I guess it's not beef jerky. It's venison jerky. We're talking meats here, folks. That's what we're talking. Bring your meats down to uh, Elon Park at the Angry Beaver. We're talking meats outside of Charlotte here. That's what you get for all that meat talking there, David. <laughs> Hole 13, 308 feet. This, believe it or not, is the second easiest course or second easiest hole statistically. Results may vary, but overall, when the numbers shake out, this comes in as the second easiest hole on the course. It's pulled right. We'll see what Yuli. You are the worst. Uh -oh. Wow. If it weren't COVID, I would have hugged him. In? Again. And this is a really interesting play, and we've seen this a number of times. You know, this is a little... Oh. Backhand, righty backhand, kind of gentle fade. And you see someone like Yuli and a number of other really skilled players throw a turnover forehand shot. And uh, if you want to talk about that in the comments, I'd love to know if you're more comfortable with one over the other here. Obviously, if you have a forehand, obviously, if you're comfortable with it, I could see people going to that. I just find it as a really interesting choice as someone that primarily throws backhand, even if I was really good at forehand, I don't know that's uh, that's what I would do. But what do I know? I'm not rated 1026 like Paul Ulibarri. Yuli back to even through 13 holes. Come on, David. Get it together, dude. Just have 
about real quick. David's thinking jerky. Good solid putt. And we'll walk away with the part of this hole. Uh, came in at 2.68. I shouldn't even say the second easiest. It actually tied for the easiest statistically at 2.68. This and a hole we'll see in just a few moments on hole number 16. Huge shout out to Tony Boyko over at Salon Enterprises. Computer, web, web hosting needs. He's the guy that hooks me up. So you have to hit this initial gap, have it lace all the way down and to the left, and then you throw kind of back up and at the basket, kind of perched up on a little bit of a of a higher point here. Let's see if that's yeah, that's a little tight, and then kicks to the left. Yeah. Deep. <laughs> Whoa. That's that's the line, as he said, maybe just a little bit too much power. But that was essentially the line you want here. This hole just plays as a gentle dog leg all the way down to the left and then back up. If you don't have a uh, a lefty forehand and you only throw lefty back in, this hole would be miserable oh. for you. That was so good. I think Yuli's feeling conflicted about his skill sets. He didn't throw out the genius remark there, so I don't think he loves it as much as the previous one, but Devin can't quite keep it clean. That basket on the right is actually not the basket. It's more to the left here. Okay. And that is making something happen from that left side. Nice shot by Kyle. Oh, no. And David had such a good drive. Still plenty of trees between him and the pin, but that was such a good drive. To see him not be able to get it up on the green, really disappointing. See if Devin can save par from there. David's got a pretty open shot here. And looks like he'll at least be able to take away the par. This comes in as the fifth most difficult hole, averaging 4.42. This and the next hole averages 4.42. So uh, two of the tougher holes back to back here on 14 and 15. <laughs> Coming in hot right at me. I swear, I'm just trying to film, guys. You don't have to kill me. You see MJ and his card at the next tee just hanging out. Little did we know we'd get there to about a three-card backup. So uh, pace and the flow has been really good up until this point, and that's about to come to a screeching halt. I think they're coming up with their own uh, set of numbers and pars. <laughs> they're talking about that being an eagle. I'm not sure what par is then. Par nine? <laughs> All right, after a very lengthy backup, uh, we're ready to go back here on hole 15. As I just mentioned, plays as 4.42. It's down and to the left, and it essentially is an island green once you get down there. There's a 
Maybe it's that same creek that meanders throughout the rest of the park, but there's a low-lying creek area that plays as out of bounds. And when David says that's going to be a fun second shot, he really just has to decide, does he want to lay up to short of the creek or is he going to try and get on and over the creek or onto the island over the other side of the creek? That's a pretty wild kick to the left. That was pushing over to the next tee, which is hole 16. Kind of comes up and parallel to the tee shot here on 15. And David's going to go for it. Is she up? That might be safe. Cut up it kind of creeps up and under the bridge. They're going to have to de uh, determine where the OB string is. Where the lines are up there. And Devin had hit way hard and carried to the left. And that looked like such a good approach, but unfortunately that's going to find him in the OB area. Make sure you guys check out Scorpion Disc Golf. We're going to be doing some big things this year. I think I'm going to be teaming up with them later in the year. That's going to be a secret what that video is going to be all about. But they've got some great stuff going on. Uh, really ambitious about growing the sport, offering a lot of tournaments in the Charlotte area. And that is deep and finds the out of bounds on the backside. Yuli's approach was actually OB as well. Or uh, correction, I believe his his uh, drive was. So he was short of the water, water's edge, but the the line kind of had him. I'll let y'all make a group decision on it. Yeah, and there, I mean, he was deemed out of bounds. It was just a matter of where was he out of bounds. So the group had to decide what did he cross, what did he not cross, and this is the ultimately the position they gave him. And, you know, he walked away with the par, as does Yuli. The OB stroke, Devin's going to be in for the par, and unfortunately, a few more than that for Kyle. Head over to hole number 16. This comes in as tied for the easiest hole on the course, so no spoilers, but this is one that you kind of got to get. That's <laughs> awful. Yuli. What looks to be a little bit short. This, like a few holes back, hole 13 averages 2.68, so 0.32 under par. Off, off line on that left side. There was a few uh, people also walking through the park that were just kind of hanging out on a Sunday afternoon walk. So David trying to help direct them so that they didn't get their head taken off. Solid run there by Kyle. This is Yuli's birdie look, trying to get under par again.
little tickle of the chains. Not quite enough. And you see the sun is out. The rain has officially cleared and temps have come up a few degrees thus far. And David going to take one back from the course. It's going to push him to seven over. Kyle will tap in for the par. Not quite enough for Devin. Yuli's looking at a par. And one has to ask themselves yet again, is, <laughs> was Yuli right? Is this the toughest course in Charlotte? Is this the, one of the toughest courses you've ever seen? I mean, hole 16 is considered one of the easiest, and yet uh, still challenging to go out and get the birdie. We're on to hole number 17, 297 feet. He doesn't like it, but let's see what it does for him over there. Oh, baby. I definitely just told him to kick it. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, I just. If it hasn't been made obvious by now, it looks like you need a forehand. If you're going to come play some golf here. Yeah, I know you can throw a backhanded turnover if you're right-handed, but there's a lot of shots where it just naturally sets up for the flight pattern of a forehand. David's got a skinny gap or out and around. And he didn't seem fully committed. Kind of seemed like he wanted to go out and around, but then pulled it or thought about it or something and kind of threw straight into that swath of trees. Okay, alternative line to get there <laughs> for, for Kyle. I'm not sure that was the intended route you see this is one of the, the more wet areas here when you're anywhere around the green here on 17 and just really awkward footing and then more not even the footing as much as kind of the awkwardness of exactly where those branches and those trees are kind of in his space in his bubble and as if he hasn't had enough struggle today he's got to hit that little tree just to have it then roll to 22 or 25 feet Get it up. Wow, you are so good. i think yuli's genuinely confused he tells us he's so bad then he tells us he's so good which is it yuli is this why you didn't want to commentate <laughs> you didn't know which personality was going to show up And in all fairness, uh, Paul Ulibarri working on a ton of stuff. We just saw him talk about his scratch to scratch series that he's going to be putting out. I think Brody Smith, Paul McBeth, Paige Pierce were all in town the day before. And uh, Paul messaged saying he just was completely exhausted. And once he found out I was coming, he said, fine, I'll, I'll still play in the tournament. So I, I appreciate Paul's dedication here. He's just out here trying to put on a show for everybody. And speaking of putting on shows, huge shout out again. Scorpion Disc Golf, giving everyone the opportunity to come play a little action here at the Angry Beaver. And on our final hole, I go to... What I feel like is about the midway point on the fairway. Again, if you land where I am, you're probably in really good position. 
And uh, that's not so bad. You see the blue stake there. That gives you about 300 feet up into the right. You have both placement and footing to deal with here, though. As you can tell, it's a little bit wet where I'm standing. David getting aggressive what looked like was an attempt at a, a backhand roller. And that kicks hard right. Left and right. Oh, David flirting there with the OB on that left-hand side. Again, basket is up and to the right. Solid drive by Kyle, and then a solid approach shot. I think you'll have a look at birdie. Oh, no. And that hits a tree and kicks to the left. Paul showing off his Bushnell. 850 range finder. I think he's telling us uh, 338 uphill with not much of a run up. Again, you're looking at that footing. Paul's been called dainty before and uh, just had to be delicate. <laughs> he says he didn't tear his ACL, so in that case, yeah, that's a victory. I think way back on hole 11, I asked you guys to uh, leave something in the comment. Please make sure you do so. Again, seven days after this video had dropped, that's when I will cut it off and I will pull from someone that has submitted an answer. And then I'll work with you uh, to get you hooked up with sixsideddisc.com for your three disc mystery pack coming your way for free. And with that, Yuli looks like he's going to walk away with the par. He's going to shoot even on the round. Plus nine for David. That means he went par on the back. A little bit of up and down. Everyone's excited and talking not only about lunch, that's where my mind is, but uh, talking about heading over to across the parking lot to the Eager Beaver where life gets easier. Lots of birdies, a lot less distance, and life gets a little bit easier. So I'm going to thank you guys all for uh, giving us the round, for showing us around the Angry Beaver, one of the toughest courses you'll ever see. Here's what it looks like after round one. They have a quick lunch break. We head to round two featuring Michael Johansson, Alex Zeros, Tal Wamp, yeah, Tal, and Paul Ulibarri. That's going to be our lead card. Thank you to my Patreon subscribers. I love you. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you guys for round number two.